sometimes we deserve to be dumped. Now, I know a lot of people aren't going to like hearing this, and for those of you who are really looking forward to your self-improvement as a means of becoming more attractive, thus making yourself a better person for yourself, which is the primary goal, but also increasing the secondary goal, which is getting your ex back, if that is something that you decide that you want. I think one of the most important things about a breakup is learning the truth and taking inventory about which issues in the relationship were ours to bear, which issues were our ex-partners to bear, and of course, which issues we created together in order to make the relationship degrade to the point where one or perhaps both of us no longer wanted to be in the relationship. Because as we know, feelings change over time. And so if the relationship issue goes on for long enough and it's not fixed for long enough, then feelings will, of course, change to the point where somebody can fix it, but they're no longer willing to. Because the emotional and romantic attraction that was once there has gone to such a point where it's just not worth it anymore. So part of the reason that I'm making this video is because I can't say that I'm somebody who tries to be honest and genuine if I don't touch on the topics that are uncomfortable. And this is one of them. Sometimes it's the dumpy's fault. Sometimes we were so busy focused on how we weren't getting certain needs met that we forgot to address the more important needs that we had control over. We forgot that in order to be somebody who is attractive, we must make the active attempt. And a lot of the time in relationships, what we tend to do is throw all of our problems at the other person and expect them to kiss our boo-boos and make it feel better. This is something that I did heavily in the relationship that I mentioned with my ex fiance of 10 years. I was so busy trying to make sure that my relationship didn't fall apart and made sure that I could do whatever I could for this person to the point of subservience, basically, that I forgot to focus on the things that made me attractive in the first place. I slowly gave up those things because I didn't realize what I was doing. And that led this person to, of course, self-sabotage our relationship by cheating. Now, this is something that I've learned because that event happened. I firmly believe that if I didn't go through my breakup, I would not be the person I am today, and I like who I am today, and I'm proud of who I am today, and that happened because I had to go through the pain of a breakup to understand that to become who I am today meant I had to go through pain to learn that lesson, and I chose to accept the lesson it had to teach me rather than to deny it and just act as though I was a victim in all of this. Now, do I sometimes think back to that relationship and wish that that set of horrible things didn't happen? Of course. But to quote Captain Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation, there are many parts of my youth that I'm not proud of. There were loose threads, untidy parts of me that I'd like to remove. But when I pulled on one of those threads, it would unravel the tapestry of my life. What the character is trying to say here is that if we could go back and undo all of the bits of ourselves that we're not proud of, or if we give in to too many of the would've, could've, or should'ves, then we never got the opportunity to learn. That means we're given wisdom when we're young, and we're given wisdom not through trial, but through hindsight. And then it means nothing. There's no merit in passing a test that you already had the answers to. Sometimes we, the dumpy, act unattractive. Sometimes during the relationship, we want too much of the other person's time, love, and attention, and we don't focus enough on the things that got us to where we are to begin with. Think about it. When you met this person... You did not need them. This is a behavior which you have taught yourself. Now, perhaps the other person had something to do with that. For example, a common one that I hear a lot is that if you are trying to go hang out with your friends and your partner kind of gives you the puppy eyes and says, come on, hang out with me tonight, ignore your friends tonight, come on, it's just tonight, except there are several tonights. And then after a while, before you know it, you've alienated your friends and the people who care about you. It's very easy to do, and I'm not saying that the dumper doesn't have anything to do with it. But this video is about you, the dumpy, and how we can do better. Because the reality is, if we don't learn how to grow and learn from our mistakes, then we're screwed. I hate to put it that way, but that's the only way to put it. If we always blame the other person for our misfortune, and we completely ignore our part in it, then not only is that not attractive, but it leaves you in a state of powerlessness, where... We're just victims and bad stuff happens to us. Well, that sucks, and that's not the life I want to live in. I want to live in a life knowing that I have power over what I do. If I did something wrong, it is my fault, and I will do the things to correct it and rise above it and learn from it so that I don't make those mistakes again. And that is a place of power. 
Not only that, but it's a place where attraction can grow. Look, in a relationship, I'm not talking about breakups anymore. During the course of a relationship, mistakes are going to be made. Mistakes from you, mistakes from the other person, it's going to happen. And if you can take a can-do attitude to those mistakes and look at your partner and say, look, I messed up today, and I'm going to do what it takes to learn from this and show you accountability so that in the future this doesn't happen again, or at least this happens perhaps in a way that's less impactful, then that shows them that you are listening. That shows them that you care. That shows them that they can rely on you. And sometimes you making a mistake, learning from that mistake, and showing them that you've learned is one of the most attractive things that you can do because it's not the mistake they're going to focus on, right? Not at all. It's going to be the fact that when you made the mistake, you took accountability, which is attractive when you say, hey, this part's mine, this is my bad, I am sorry, and it shows that your ego is not going to get in the way, but it also shows that you're willing to change because you understand that whatever you just did affected the relationship negatively, you don't want to affect the relationship negatively, and by taking accountability and willingness to change, you want to see the relationship succeed, and you are someone who is secure, stable, and doesn't just defend yourself from every little thing that might or might not have been your fault. And this is the same person who has boundaries, who's able to say, look, I appreciate that you feel that way, but I completely disagree, and here's my suggested fix to this situation. The same person who has boundaries who says, look, I love you, nothing's wrong and nothing happened, but I don't want to see you today. In fact, I've been neglecting my friends, I've been neglecting my family, I've been neglecting my body, whatever it might be, my mental health, and I need to make some attempts to fix those things, and so I'd be really, really grateful if you would just give me some time and let me do what I have to do, understanding that nothing happened, nobody's mad, and it's okay. Look, learning to love yourself is not easy, and nobody ever said it would be. Now, we all know it's a worthy goal. We all know that sometimes in relationships and out of relationships, there are things about us that maybe could stand for some scrutiny and a couple of improvements, and that's just life, and we'll never be perfect, and we shouldn't strive to be. But I think it's important that we're able to say, especially across the course of this video, look, there's a couple of things I could have done better. Look, there's a couple of times where I maybe didn't act so attractive. There was a couple of times where I knew they needed some space, but I blew up their phone because my anxiety was too high. I knew there were some times where I probably should have said yes to hanging out with my friends, but instead I hung out with my partner for the fifth time this week. Sometimes it's us. And that is a position of strength. That is a position where we can change who we are to become even better, even stronger, even more attractive, even more mentally healthy. And who would reject those things? Who would say, no thanks, I don't want to be more attractive. No thanks, I am not particularly fond of mental health, no thank you. The answer is nobody. So don't let yourself get too distracted in your goal of winning your ex back because you need to understand that that is a symptom. The cause was that you didn't focus on yourself, which was what brought them to you in the first place. A sense of confidence, a sense of attraction. Those things have been lost across the way. Now look, if what you took away from this video is that it's all your fault, then you clearly weren't listening and I need you to go back and listen again. I'm not saying it's not all your fault. I'm saying take the appropriate blame and grow from it. That is a position of strength.